says in a business a and c invested amounts in the ratio of 2 is to 1 so a is to c is equal to 2 is to 1 a and c have invested in the ratio 2 is to 1 whereas a and b invested amounts in the ratio 3 is to 2 a is to b is equal to 3 is to 2 a and c have invested 2 is to 1 a and b have invested 3 is to 2 now if their annual profit is 1,57,300, then what is B's share in the profit? What is B's share in the profit? First and foremost, you have to club the two ratios. We have to find out what is A is to B is to C. A is to B is to C is equal to what? How do you do that? Just look at only one point, right? Whenever these two ratios are given, two different ratios are given to you, look at the common term there. Like here, what do we have common? A is common in both the ratios. Here we have A is to C and here it is A is to B. Now try to make those two values equal. Like here we have A as two parts, C is one part. Here we have A as three parts and B is two parts. So in one case A is two parts, in the other case A is equal to three parts. These two are unequal, which have to be made equal. How can you make it equal? Multiply by a common, um, you know, I mean, multiply by factors such that it becomes a common multiple of two and three. Like for example, two can be multiplied by something to get six. Three can also be multiplied by something to get six, right? So 2 should be multiplied by 3. Now if 2 is multiplied by 3, it becomes 6. But you know that when 2 is multiplied by 3, 1 should also get multiplied by 3. Yes or no? If you have multiplied the numerator by 3, denominator should also get multiplied by 3. So A is to C, which was 2 is to 1, becomes 6 is to 3. And this is a no-brainer. I am probably explaining it a little longer, but you know what, what has to be done there. So 2 is to 1 becomes 6 is 3. Similarly, 6 is to, uh, 3 is to uh, 2 becomes 6 is to 4. Multiply by 2 here on both sides. So 3 into 2, 6, 2 into 2, 4. So the ratios have now changed to 6 is to 3 and 6 is to 4. Now what do you see? In A is to C, A is equal to 6 parts. In A is to B, A is equal to 6 parts. In both the cases, A is equal to 6 parts. So I can say A is 6 parts. Now the comparison is easy. What is B? B is equal to 4 parts. Take it properly, right? B is equal to 4 parts. And what is C? 3 parts. Done. You have got the ratio. 6 is to 4 is to 3. Then, simply, he is asking us to find out the share of B. What is the share of B? B has got how many parts? 4. 4 out of total. 4 plus 6, 10. 10 plus 3, 13. 4 out of 13. Multiply this by 1573. 1573. Now, here comes the point. How quickly do you divide 1573 by 13? This is what matters. If you are able to do this mentally, you are good enough. Otherwise, you end up wasting a lot of time. Now, here comes the concept of split and merge whatever we had discussed right in the beginning of the session the same thing has to be used here as well what do you do see our requirement is to divide 1573 by 13 what i would do is split 1573 in multiples of 13 try to split 1573 in terms of multiples of 13 so 1573 will become 1300 plus 273 see this has to be done mentally i am writing it here so it is taking time but you have to just visualize this so, 1573 can be taken as 1300 plus 273. Why am I taking it as 1300 plus 273? Why not 1500 plus 73? Because when you take 1500, is it divisible by 13? No. 1300? Yes. 1300 is divisible by 13. Whether 273 is divisible or not, that's secondary. But first observation should be done in such a way that, split should be done in such a way that, the bigger part that you have taken is divisible by the denominator. So, 1300 is divisible by 13. And clearly, 1300 by 13 will give you 100. So, first part has given you 100. Now, look at 273. If you can directly say 273 by 13 equals to 21, nothing like it. If you are unable to do it, then again break 273. 273 can be taken as 260 plus 13. Why are we taking 260 plus 13? Why not 250 plus 23? Because the denominator is 13. So, always break the numerator in terms of a multiple of the denominator. So, 260 by 13 is 20. 13 by 13 is 1. So, 100 plus 20 plus 1. How much is that? 121. So, basically, this is equal to 121. 121 into 4? 4, 484. That's your answer. Option B is your answer. 484. 48400. 0, 0. Of course, two zeros that we had here have to be added here. You're getting it? Are you able to follow? There's one more way of doing it. I mean, if at all, you... I mean, you want to eliminate some options, let's say. You may not get the exact answer. But when you look at 4 by 13, 4 by 13 is like one third. Yes or no? 4 by 13. B has got 4 parts out of total 13 parts. So, 4 out of 13 is like one third of the value, right? One third of the value. What is one third of the value? One third of what? One third of 1,57,000. What is one third of 1,50,000? 50,000. Close to 50,000. Answer should be closer to 50,000. So, immediately option A and option D get eliminated.
but unfortunately both b and c are like 48000 right close to 50000 48400 48000 so what happens it is not so easy to eliminate the options now of course you can apply techniques like uh, unit digit method or digital root method but simple elimination is it should be close to one third a and d are eliminated the only two options left now are 48400 and 48000 anyways when you do the proper calculation you will get option b